Okay, so this is problem 127 on page 296. And we are given the function f of x equals 2.9 the square of x plus 20.1. First question, describe how the graph can be obtained from applying transformations to the square root of x. So first, the square of x is the base function. And then number two, in order of transformations, is 2.9 times the square root of x. What will this do to the square root of x? Yes, verse equals stretch. Very good. And number three, 2.9, the square root of x plus 20.1. What does this do, this transformation do to graph from number two? Vertically up 20.1. Very good. Excellent. In part B, so this was part A. In part B, according to the model, what is the medium height? So f of x is the medium height. I should write that. So x is months. And f of x is median height in inches. Median height in inches. Okay. Uh, that are 28 <coughs> months old. So how do I determine the height, or the median height, sorry, when x is 48? Exactly. We'll plug it in in a minute. In part C. Well, let's, let's do it now. Let's not wait. Okay, so in y equals... I would like to put this function. They may ask me for more. So I will put in 2.9 times the square root of x. And then outside, plus 20.1. So I haven't used it with the other class, so I have to go back and uh, change the table. So I don't always, for some reason, it goes back to the Okay, so then second and entry, and then I mean second and table, and 48 months. So I have the answer is 40.192 inches. 40.192 inches. And now it's, it's asking us, uh, the actual median height for boys at 48 months is 40.8. So this is from the model, and actual is 40, 40.8 inches. And now the question is, how well does the model describe the actual height, median height? Oh, sorry. Sorry. So uh, 40.192 um, from the model, from the function, in other words, and the actual it was 40.8. So do you like this model? Would you recommend it? Does it represent, at least at 48, I have not checked what happens at 50 or 60 or 10 months or 15 months, but at least at 48 months. Would you say that the model is doing a good job or not so good? I think it's doing a perfect job. 40 inches, 40.2 versus 40.8, it's a pretty good job. Yeah, pretty good job. Okay, for part C now. Use the model to find the average rate of change in inches per month between birth and 10 months. So the average between 0 and 10. What is the formula for the average rate of change? F of 10 minus F of 0 over 10 minus 0. Excellent. That's it. So I go back to my calculator. Since I already have the function <coughs> in, let's go back. So now I want 0, and I want 10. So then I have uh, 29.271 minus 20.1 20, 20 divided by 10. And I will do that with a graphing calculator. So <coughs> I have, I don't need it, actually. So it's 29 minus 20.1 is 99.9. Um, um, 
one divided by 10, 0.91. Measurement units per, it comes from a ratio. Exactly. So it appears that between zero and 10 months old, their rate of change is quite steep. They, their height, the median height increases by almost an inch, almost an inch per month. Okay, let's see the last part here. Uh, use the model to find the average rate of change in inches per month again between 50 and 60 months. So all I have to do is now average between 50 and 60. The same formula, f of 60 minus f of 50 divided by 10 minus 0, which is 10. That's why I put the function in, so I don't have to punch it in. So I put 50 <coughs> and 60. And uh, 42.563. Minus 40.606 divided by 10. Whatever that is. So 42.5 minus 40.6 is 1.9. 1.9 divided by 10 is approximately 0.19 inches per month. So now they're asking us, as the final question, um, How is this difference shown? Uh, um, no, 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 I jumped. I, might, I have my wrong glasses. How does this compare with the answer in part C? So how does this compare with the answer in part C? Yes, even I would say five times less. If I consider this point two and this one, so this is kind of five times as much as this. Does it make any sense? So I will say uh, between 0 and 10 is about 5 times as much as b is between 50 and 60. So let me graph the function here, because I don't want to draw on the, uh, on the book, on the page. So this is the graph, right? So this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. See between 0 and 10, this is the slope of 1. But look at between 50 and 60. This is the slope of 0.2. So obviously they grow much faster on average of almost one inch per month between zero and birth and 10 months. But they slow down significantly because between 50 and 60, they only grow at one fifth of an inch per month. Good. I'm, I'm finished with everything that I wanted to show you. Um, and now I'm ready to do whatever you want me to. Yes. Uh, I love to see. Did you already answer the homework? No, I came in a couple minutes later. But I just have a, a quick question. Yes. Um, so for two, I think this is our last time. We're not here right now, right? No. So I was hoping that everyone would go through this last class. Um, 2.359. Yes. Um, I, for some reason, I'm not grasping which would be vertical or horizontal. Let lines? Or, yeah. Position is x equals. Altitude is y equals. So if it... If you only have y, it's horizontal. If you only have x, it's vertical. No, but they give you, you find both. So okay, let's take a look. Maybe I misunderstood the problem. Yes. What does it say? Directions right here, but it's just, um, I think it was two. It gives you no, that wasn't two point. This one is where you had to solve so if it was um, five x plus y minus three. 
two were zero. And then you had to find uh, y, uh, do the slope intercept form, which is five equals, I mean, y equals negative five x plus three. Um, and the point is five over three and three. And then it said, and then you have to apply it. And I was having a hard time with applying it. So are we asked to graph this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I no, 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 no. So I will never ask you to graph using the slope. Don't even bother with that. It's the only function that works with the slope. Nobody cares about it. So if I'm asked to graph, I will say when x is 0, I cover it and move 3 to the other side to get y. And I get y equals 3. So 0, 3 is the first point. Then when y is 0, I cover this, and I move 3 and divide by 5. So x equals 3 fifth. So 3 fifth comma 0. We don't care for anything else. So then I will plot these two points. Connect and extend the line. So 0 comma 3, 1, 2, 3. 3 fifth is smaller than, smaller than uh, 1, like 0.6, right? So I'm going to say here, for a little bit to the right of 0.5. <coughs> and this is it. So I graphed 5x plus y minus 3 equals 0. So you said at 3 because that's the rise? The rise. 0, 3. Oh, okay. Forget about the slope. Okay. Where you just 0, comma 3 is here. 3 fifths, 0 is here. So from 0 to 3. So I just, okay. All right, and then um, anything else? Two point three. Yes. 15. Yes. Next time, either send me an email and I'll I'll look at it uh, on the computer, or just uh, take a screenshot or with your cell phone. So what do I do now? Well, how how do so negative four over zero? How, and it's vertical. So what says that that's vertical? What do you mean by negative 4 over 0? 4 over 0, negative 4 over 0. That's the, if the slope is undefined. And so, OK, slope, undefined, yes. And it's, what else we have? It's 4 over 0. I just want to know why, how it's a vertical. Let me show you. Because horizontal lines have slope 0. The vertical lines have slope undefined. So this slope has a positive slope, and this one, this uh, line has a positive slope, and this one a negative. So if you go back to the notes from last time, we, we graphed four different types of lines before that, and before that. Again, here, it's fine. So there are <coughs> four types of lines. This one with a positive slope. This one, which is horizontal with zero slope. This one, which is the slope negative. And this one, any vertical line has the slope undefined. Well, here's why. If you choose two points on this line, they are both have the same. They will have the same x. X. Um, let's say 2 comma 5 and 2 comma 8. See, the slope will be 8 minus 5 over 2 minus 2, which is 0 in the denominator. Negative 4 over 0 is undefined. It does not exist. Division by 0 does not give any number. Every time we divide by 0, we have to write undefined. Is that better? No, just talk to you. So you are given two points. Can you give can you give me the two points? I mean the so M is the slope, right? So you have the slope is greater than zero, slope is equal to zero, slope is less than zero. And then that one the slope is undefined, meaning it's zero at the bottom. Yes. But do you are you given the points? In yeah, the problem. Yeah. 
return the points here. So the points are given to you? Yes. So, okay. So, um, yes. What are they? So, um, two, so one of the points were um, negative nine, okay, negative nine, negative two, and nine and negative two. Are you sure? Because this is not undefined. No, that one's not undefined. Oh, this is something else. Yeah, that's a different problem. Okay, so then we have the slope, which is negative 2 minus negative 2 mm -hmm. divided by 9 plus 9. Right. Now this is 0 over 18, which is 0, which makes a horizontal line. That's a different story. Right, that's what I was saying. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out which, well, I guess now that she wrote the lines, how do I know when it's horizontal and what's vertical. And what's Any horizontal vertical. line has slope zero. Any vertical line has slope undefined. Okay. So if I get zero, I know it's horizontal. If I don't get a number which is undefined, I know it's vertical. And the other two options are positive slope, negative slope. Is that better? I think so. Good. Next question. Anything else you would like to go back to? Yes. Yes. Of course. Fifteen. Yes. Very good. So fifteen. Okay, so for 15, uh, domain. Can anyone give us a domain of 15? Very good. A range. Negative 4 to infinity. We agree? That's okay. Uh, the x intercepts. I would say absolutely 3 and 7, so x equals 3, x equals 7. Uh, the y-intercept. Yes, so y-intercept, y equals 21, and I will write it as an ordered pair, and I will write these as ordered pairs as well. Okay, intervals on which the function is increasing. f increasing, f constant, and f decreasing. So uh, the function is increasing on? Very good. On 5 to infinity. Great. Constant. Remember, we are not interested where the value is. So it's like somebody, I'll give you that example again. It's like somebody walking up to you and saying, my salary increased uh, between the years 2010 and 2005. Is you're not going to ask that person from which to which. It's sufficient to know that his salary increased between these time intervals or time interval. We're not interested from which to which. It's a totally different story. So, so the function is constant on negative infinity to zero. For the x values between negative infinity and zero, the function is constant. And the function is decreasing on the interval. Uh, 0 to 5 indeed. For the x values, all these all these represent x values. We're not interested in from which value of y till which value of y. We are only interested in the trend. The trend between 5 and infinity is increasing. For x between negative infinity and 0, the trend is constant. Between 0 and 5, 5 the trend is decreasing. Uh, the number which f has a relative min? 
x equals 5 function has a relative min. Perfect. Uh, what is the relative minimum now? y equals? It's negative, right? Negative 4. Very good. Is rel min. Very good. Um, find f of negative 6. <coughs> f of negative 6 is? I think it is. I think it is negative f of negative 6. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's 21. Okay. Um, bless you. Thank you. f of x equals negative 3. Do not, do not look at any of this because you're not going to have those questions like that. So they're helping here with some answers, they, right? Because once you put in an answer, they, they have to be able to check it. So we are only looking at this. So uh, f of x equals negative 3. What do you do? You draw a horizontal line at negative 3 and you read the, y, the x values. What are they? Uh, 6. 7 is 0. Perfect. Uh, is this function odd even none of the above? Is the graph symmetric with respect to the y-axis? Of course it's not. Not symmetric. A symmetric graph with respect to the y-axis has to have this identical piece in the first quadrant and the second quadrant, which is not the case here. If it's symmetric with respect to the origin, what we have in the first quadrant, we have to have a copy in the third. Or what we have in the fourth, we have to have a copy in the second, which is not the case. Are we okay with that? Everyone? Okay, perfect. Anything else that you would like to go back to? Anything else? Um, yes? Number two. number two. So please remember to redo all problems we did in class. Please. All problems we did in class. Number two. So we have 3x plus 7 squared equals 36. Obviously, this is completely set up for what? For the square root, but not before we clean it up. Not for the quadratic formula. I divide both sides by 3, and I get x plus 7 squared equals 12. Now, this is typical for taking square roots. It's already completed the square, so I want to take advantage of that. Because if I want to use something else, then I have to expand it and subtract and set equal to 0. It's a, a lot more. It's not wrong, but it's a lot more work. So how many solutions do I have to get? Very good. So then plus or minus the square root of 12 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So 2 the square root of 3. So this is x equals negative 7 plus 2 the square root of 3. Any questions on this? Yes, you just went like really, really, really fast. This is something we did in previous classes. Yeah, I know, but I still don't get it. So, so the square root of 12 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, and I replace the square root of 4 by 2. I'll be more than happy to do more problems, you know, after class if you still want to do something like this. Is this clear? We've done this in my math lab, right? Many times. Any questions? Yes, please. Sissy, go ahead. Anything. Yes. Yeah, this is what this is from the uh, from the handout, right? That those seven. Yeah, yeah. Yes, of course. Let's do that. Very good. So here I see the first term, which has a four inserted in there. So I'm going to put it in front to organize everything. Plus three to the third, and plus three x minus one squared, x plus two to the fourth. Just to rearrange it a little bit. 
then I see that these two terms have common factors. And I see x minus 1, and I see x plus 2. But I haven't established the exponents yet. So what exponent will I put for x minus 1? I see power 3, and I see power 2. Power 2, the smallest of the two. Awesome. I see power 3 and power 4. What do I get? Exactly. Smallest of the two, like we always do. What is left from the first term? I took two of these, and I took all of three from these. So a four must be left. But what else? Very good. Now I reach the positive symbol, and I write plus. I have to write the three, because there is no number in front. right? So three must stay. Then x minus 1 squared are all out. And then x plus 2 to the fourth, and I took x plus 2 to the third. So 1 of x plus 2 must be left in. Do we understand this step? Everyone? Everyone? Yes? Right, that's why I asked you to do those seven problems, to yeah. see if you have any difficulties with it. So always redo those. Any questions? So now I have 4x minus 4 plus 3x plus 6. And the simplified form will be x minus 1 squared, x plus 2 cubed, and thus 7x plus 2. And this is it. So what did we accomplish with this? Well, we have a sum of two terms, and now we have just one term with three products. I mean, one product with several factors. Is this clear? <laughs> Yes. All right. So we're basically pulling from the original, well, I guess not pulling. But yes, from the two terms, I pull out the common factor. This is common, and I have to choose the smallest. This is common, and I have to choose the smallest. And then there, you just rewrote it. So from this term, I pull out two of those. So one is left. Four must be left, and these, these are out. And then the plus. And I have the. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Set up that one part for me one more time. So the the x minus one squared it mm -hmm. came out because it's it's two of those terms there. So you take the smallest of the two. Okay. So let's do this. So if I have x squared plus x to the third, I know x is a common factor. Which power? Squared. Yes. The same thing. And you have one plus x. Exactly the same idea. Because then once you multiply it, it'd be right. Exactly the same. Power 3, power 2 goes 2 in front. Power 3, power 4 goes 3. The exact same idea here. I cannot take out more than what they have in common. And then the second part, the 4. Yeah, so I take 2, but 1 is left. I take 3, they're out, and I still have the 4. See, when I multiply this by this, I have to recover this term. 4 x minus 1 times x minus 1 squared is x minus 3, and times x plus 2 cubed. That's why I want you to do those seven problems. Yeah, I can't do it with, I mean, I, I've tried, but I can't, if I'm not grasping, then I can't complete it, so I just got to. Did you look at the previous problems we did? I looked at those, I have them in my book. I'm just, okay, I well, can't look more it, means, it means that we have to work on some more. So when we finish, if you have a few minutes, we can sit down and work on some more. Other questions here? Are we okay with this? Yes? Okay. So let me just refresh our memory on something. Just punching in some numbers in the calculator is not going to increase your skills. I wish we didn't do that. I really wish we didn't have those homework on my math app. I really wish, but my department decided that, so I can't say anything. That's not learning. It really isn't. Just punching in numbers and then clicking on, show me an example to mimic. I don't think it, it's a good idea for all. For some, it may be. I can't say. But not for all. I don't even know how to put that in the calculator. Everything I do, I hand write. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. <laughs>
Very good. Next question. Anything else that you would like to work on? Is today's class reviewing? I hope not the entire time. So I hope we not. We need to learn something else today. But not for the test. Other things. Besides. Yes. I'm, I'm um, just hoping. We'll see. Um, Do you have other questions? Yes. Um, I mean, I have a particular question just kind of like not helpful. If we go over like, um, <coughs> like when something is giving you its like slow growth stamina and then it gives you a point that it's slow. Yeah, if you have, have, yes. Do you have a problem like that? Um, yeah, here, I have one written down. Yes, please. So it's just, it's a slow growth stamina and it's 30 and negative 4 times. Never negative 4 comma 9? Yeah, negative Okay, what are we asked to do? Um, it's asking, asking you to give it in um, point slope. Yeah, point slope on there. Very good. So y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. The slope is 7. x1 is negative 4. y1 is 9. Yes. Yes. Um, on the test, are you going to give us like the, um, like the equations? I'm going to give you the uh, difference quotient. You don't have to memorize that. Okay. But um, y equals mx plus b, we know yeah. this from a long time. Y minus y1 equals the slope times x, that's we know. The quadratic formula we know. If there is something that you get stuck on, I, I just said to Ella earlier today, if you get something gets you stuck, stuck on, I'm going to write it on the board. Oh, okay. But you shouldn't get stuck on yeah. any of that. Is this clear so far? Yeah. Okay, so then y minus 9 equals 7 times x plus 4. Is this clear? Everyone, are you with me? Yes? Okay. So then I have y minus 9 equals 7x plus 28, and y equals 7x plus 37. We move 9 to the other side. So this is the y equals mx plus b, and this is the point slope one. Yes. Um, Any problem? Yeah, I'm not going to ever ask you for that. Okay. The general form in this case will be 7x minus y plus 37 equals 0. Nobody cares about it. Here's why. I can't read the slope. I can't read the y-intercept. It has no meaning. I'm never going to ask you for that. But I know that my math lab is, is doing that. Yeah, yeah, it was really confusing. Yeah. The reason why I don't use it is that no one, I mean, it's not useful. I can't determine anything. Oh, yeah, that was awful. Yeah. No worries. Yes. Can you bring that down a little bit? I'm still trying to help you. Sure. Yes, next question, please. Um, I just wanted to clarify something. Yes. So, on, the, on these the rational equations with, like, the fractions and the... Yes, if there is a ratio... It's a rational equation as long as it has x in the denominator. If, like if the answer equals one of the restrictions. Then you have to say no solutions. Okay. If it has only that solution, then you will have to say no solutions. If it has x equals 5 and x equals 10 and only one of them is among the restrictions, then you will have one solution. Okay. So then for the solution set is 0? Yes. Yeah, so you're not going to don't look at that. Oh, okay. There is no point in you're not going to ask any of this. Oh. I'm just going to ask you to solve it. Yes. Yes. Anything else you would like to work on? Yes, please. Is he? Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so this is 3 over x plus 2 plus 4 over x minus 3 minus 20 over x plus 2 x minus 3 equals 0. Um, oh, yes. we moved it already. Oh, yeah, I don't Oh, know. okay. Yeah. I'm like, that's not what <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so save some time. So if we want to go over this uh, whole thing, then so we can, yeah, cut. So we need to equal it to zero. That's the first step. Okay. If you are using this method. If somebody else presents the, to you a method from, you know, it, you're going to the math lab and they show you a different method, you're comfortable with that one, you can use it. Okay. Right. I think I didn't know what this one. Okay, so then you have to write that x not equal negative 2 and x not equal 3. We know that already. This is absolutely mandatory to write it. 
And then find the least common denominator, which is very good. So then uh, I need adjustments for these three. What are they? Very good. For the first one, indeed, x minus 3. Very good. And here for the last one, you don't have to write anything or just write 1. Remember to distribute. So we have 3x minus 9 plus 4x plus 8 and minus 20. Now take a moment and look at the top and say yes or no. Yes or no? Oh, I thought you meant 3 times x, 3 times <laughs> 9, 4 times x, 4 times 2, and negative 20 times 1. Good. So I have to combine like terms, and I get 7x minus 21 over x plus 2, x minus 3. And now I write 0 over 1. Why do I write 0 over 1? Just to ref just to refresh our memory that at this point we will cross multiply. If it's not a proportion, I cannot cross multiply. So this times 1 is 7x minus 21 equals this times 0, which is 0. So then x equals 3. I always have to go back immediately to the um, restrictions that I started with and make a decision. And since I see 3 is on the list, I will say no way, since it's the only one, and it doesn't work because it's among the restrictions, I will say no solutions. Any questions? Yes, Cece? Um, I don't think it's a complex question, but why couldn't you just do the divided <coughs> 7 But you have to write 7x minus 21 equals 0. Oh, okay. So once you write that, you'll still have to divide. But you have to write the equation. So you can say, you're correct. You can say a fraction is 0 if the top is 0. But you still have to write this. You're correct. You don't have to cross multiply. You can think in terms of a divided by b is 0. When is a over b 0? Only when a is 0. When is this fraction 0? Only when 7x <coughs> minus 21 is 0. So, but you still have to write the equation. You still have to write 7x minus 21 equals 0. Anything else? Next question. Anything you want to work on? Number 4. That's fine, number four. So we have x cubed plus 3x squared minus 49x minus 147 equals 0. Why did I move everything to one side? What type of equation is this? No, not at all. It, the degree is 3. And not quadratic. The degree would be 2 for quadratic. Indeed, it is, yes. It has degree 3, and we expect how many solutions? It's okay to write on the paper, just not to forget. It's okay. I do that too, right? Good. What do we do with uh, four terms? Exactly. From the first two, what will you factor out? What is left in parentheses? Very good. Do not look. What do I write? What else do I have to write? Exactly. Now I look. Obviously, it must be negative 49. Now, the common factor is x plus 3. What is left? And from the first day of classes, we know how to factor this. Very good. Awesome x plus 7 and x minus 7, and that's how we get three solutions. And the solutions are x equals negative 3, x equals negative 7, and x equals 7. I'm a little lost at that, uh, at that x squared. 
I know you took it. I know why you took out the x plus three. Correct. Um, because of the first term, and then the second one, you said we know to write x plus three again because it's the common. Yes, exactly what we did with the uh, with this. Yeah, on that extra paper. But how do we know that now? Because like exactly what we did here. It's a very good point. X minus 1 is common. And I put it in front. X plus 3 is common. And I put it in front. But that's what I'm saying. How From the first term, I have left an X squared. From the second term, I have left a negative 49. Go back and review some of the factoring problems because we had this for polynomials. Is that better now from here here? Because if I multiply this by this, I get this piece. If I multiply this by this, I get this piece. If I want to go back and check. I distribute this to x squared and I get that. I distribute this to negative 49 and I get that. So when I take this piece outside, it's right here now. What is left, I have an x squared minus 49. Okay. It's similar, but it looks slightly different because it has so much more. So if I go back and distribute this, I get this. If I distribute it here, I get this. So, go, so factor is going backwards. No, I showed you why we factor that because if I decide to go back and check, I will get back what I started with. I mean, but if but that right there, if you multiply it, you'll get what's up the top. Yes. So it is so this No, factoring was not that. I factor the common factor, but I'm showing you why I factor x plus three. Because this times this will give us this, and this times this will give us this. So it's correct. X plus three is the common factor. From the first term, I have x squared left, and from the second term, I have negative 49. Is that somewhat better? So then I factor x squared minus 49 into these two. Anyone? Is this OK? Can you do another one? Like Yes, they are in 1.5 and um, other types of equations. 1.6, sorry. 1.6. So what is important um, is, um, let's find another. But what is very important is to redo those several problems, because by Wednesday, we will forget how to address this. So um, it's number four. I, we may have done it or not. I'm not sure. Four on page 185. 4x cubed minus 12x squared equals 9x minus 27. All right, can we try to do it with, like, first? OK, yes. Just go ahead and work on it for a minute. 